Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Coming to you once again, not quite live from One Take Studios, where we're going to talk about math models in business today, which is a different topic for us a little bit here. Um, I'm going to look at four essential basic math models that we might see in the business world. These are basic things overall. I do find that with money, people tend to make weird decisions and not always understand how things go together. So I will do my best to be super duper clear with this. The first thing that we are looking at is the idea of calculating sales tax. Calculating sales tax. All right, and the concept here is that I can find the tax if I simply do the rate times the purchasing price, the purchasing amount. There we go. And so there it is. There's the breakdown. That's a cursive T, by the way, because I don't want to use a regular T because it looks like a plus sign. So I can find the amount of tax by doing the rate times the purchasing price. Rates, remember, should be written as decimals. Otherwise, your calculations end up being really weird and kind of wrong. <laughs> All right. So let's say for the fun of it, here's our example here. Um, we're going to be purchasing a hoodie for $19.99, and I live in Michigan that has 6% sales tax. So how much tax am I going to pay on this? Again, this is for calculating the tax and just the tax. So if we're looking at this guy right here, ta -dun, ta -dun, we're going to say, all right, tax. That's going to be um, $19.99 is the purchasing price, 6%. So to find the amount of tax, I will take the rate of 6%. Percent literally means divided by 100, so 6% 6 is 0 0.06, 6 hundredths. And I multiply that times the purchasing price of 19.99 for a total of. All right, so think about how this is going to turn out because of rounding purposes and because it's money. So money sort of, we want to pay attention to that. This is 1.1994 um, is how it's currently coming up on my screen when I multiply that. So what makes sense here? If we're talking dollars and cents, literally cents, uh, 19 cents is going to round to 20 cents, and so we're going to call this approximately a dollar 20. Now keep in mind, we are not paying a dollar 20 total; we are paying a dollar 20 in tax on top of the 19.99. So I could go ahead and I could add that to the 19.99 to find my total for checkout. Um, is there a way of doing all these things in once? Could I find the tax and add it together? Absolutely, and some of you probably know what that is. Here we only multiplied by 6%. What if we multiplied by 106%? If I put a 1 there, that means I get all of the 19.99 plus 6% 6 cents, 6 more. That is one way to take a little bit of a shortcut there. Some people are okay with that, some people are not. But that is our first idea of the day is calculating sales tax. All right, so next up is the idea of something called straight line depreciation. Now, depreciate is to lose value. And so straight line indicates that we'd be losing the same amount of value consistently as we go, dropping in value. Is straight line depreciation a thing? Yes and no. I think that a lot of things actually don't lose value in a linear manner, but that's the one that we're going to look at for today for models. So uh, annual depreciation can be found by just looking at the difference between what this thing used to be worth and what is it worth now. All right, so the residual value is the residing value, the value that it currently has, the value left behind compared to the original. And if I take my amount of my loss over how many years, that's going to give me how much I'm losing in value every single year. Um, in the case of this, let's say that we bought a car, the car was $24,000, and five years later it's now worth $13,000. So it's been losing losing money here. Is losing uh, value on a vehicle straight line? Probably not. It probably has more of a curve to it than this, but just for the fun of it. What's going to happen with this? Well, we say, all right, I'd like to know the annual depreciation. How much am I losing? Well, originally it was worth $24,000, so there's my $24,000. And then minus, how much is it currently worth? What's its residual value? That's the 13000 And I've lost this amount of money over the course of, did you find it? Boom, five years right there. That is what I'm looking at. So for this, if I actually run that calculation, I end up with 2200 Wow, not 22000 2200 there we go. And that is dollars, and that is how much I am losing every year. So I am losing $2,200 worth of value every year on this vehicle, if it truly is straight line depreciation. All right, so that is the second equation of the day right there, the second idea. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There we go. Decorate it, make it pretty, make sure that you can find it, find it easily. All right, so two down, two to go, sort of. This next one's a doozy, though. It actually comes in multiple parts. 
So I'd like you to see this. Oops, there we go. Um, I'm going to set this over here. Um, nope, turn off reminders. Go away. Will it let me go? Hey, <laughs> they came back. Sorry, the recording froze for a second. All right, I want to talk about manufacturing and production and retail for a moment here. I've got three formulas here, but they really kind of all go together. So the first up is going to be a simple formula for cost of production. If I'm going to make something, it's going to cost me something to make it. What will it cost? Well, usually there's a number of fixed costs that are involved in any business, and typically we're going to view this as like a month-by-month -month sort of thing. So what might you have to pay every month? Well, if you've got a location, you probably have some sort of mortgage or rent payment, perhaps. Um, how about utilities? Maybe a phone bill, things of that nature, advertising, perhaps. All right, so you've got fixed costs that happen every month. And then on top of that, every item you make costs a certain amount. And so we're going to multiply the cost to make the items times the number of items. And if we put these things together, that's going to be our cost of production. So that is our next concept right there. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, right there. Well, so I've made something. What do I do with it? I sell it. This is gross income is up next. All right, so cost of production, I've just made something and I'm going to sell it. Well, what's going to happen? I'm going to take my selling price times how many things I sold. Again, that's going to tell me how much money I've got coming in. The word gross does not actually mean disgusting here. <laughs> the word gross means this is simply how much money I'm bringing in, and I'm not taking into account any of my costs at the moment. This is not a profit statement. This is purely how much money is coming in. So here's how much money it took to make the item, and here's how much money I got from selling. So ideally then what happens is those two things kind of come together. I can find out my profit, I can find out how much money I've made by looking at the difference between those two items. So if I take the amount of money I made, my gross income, and I subtract my cost of production, what is left is how much money I get to keep, or probably possibly reinvest in my business as well. So these three things kind of go together, and I've got a gigantic example here for us. It puts it all together. All right, so I've got the raw company, and it sells dinosaur puppets. Because why not? Why wouldn't there be a raw company that sells dinosaur puppets? Hmm? Hmm? I don't know. So, fixed costs. Every month I have to pay $12,350, and on top of that, to make a puppet, it's going to cost me $3.75 in materials for each and every puppet. In one month, RAR is going to sell 14,000 of these things, and they're going to sell them for $11 a piece. So how much profit or loss do we have? Notice I didn't leave any room on this page for solving, because we're going to put that all into the next page, because this is just a lot to look at, and I'd like to break it up a smidge. All right, so here's our given information. Here's what we know. Let's see if we can piece this together. What is it going to cost us to actually make this stuff? All right, so cost. Oh, I'm going to switch over here, I think. There we go. So the cost to make these items, well, I'm going to make my fixed costs were 12350 so that's money I have to pay as part of my costs. And then on top of that, again, every single puppet that I make is going to cost me 375 but take a look, there are 14000 that I sold. If there's 14,000 sold, that means that hopefully I made 14,000. And yes, okay, maybe I made more, or, or well, I can't make less, because if I'm going to sell that many, I have to have that many. That's usually how that works. So 14,000 puppets at 375 apiece. There we go, 375. All right. So we have our fixed costs plus the cost for making each individual item. And again, we're doing that times the number of items sold. Technically, I just turned those around, but it's the same thing because it's multiplication. What does this mean? What does this mean? How much money did we have as a result of this? That means that this was a whopping 64850 There we go. $64,850 are the costs to make my 14,000 dinosaur puppets. All right. Well, if that's the cost, how much money did I make? So income, specifically gross income. I'm going to do G income for gross income. I'm going to take, again, the 14000 that I sold, but each of these was sold for $11. So I'm going to multiply it times 11 this time. Is that a good thing? Yes, yes, actually that is, because guess how much money that means I'm bringing in? $154,000. Why am I happy right now? Because the money that I brought in is more than the money it cost me to make these items to begin with. So if I'm looking for, hey, how much money did I make? What is my profit on this thing? Pull it all together. 
profit is going to be, simply the difference between the 154,000 and the 64,850. And if we subtract those, we find that we are probably kind of happy because we made, ooh, yes, 89,000, there it is, 89,150 dollars. Grand total, that is our profit. And it's a positive number, so we made money. If we subtract and it had been negative, that would mean that we were lost money. Money in the hole. All right. These each individually usually make sense to people, but sometimes when they all come together, you may need one or two or sometimes all three of these particular equations. So keep that in mind as something that can be a little bit flexible as far as you picking what you need to use and when. All right. And then last up for today, the last thing I want to look at here is, where'd it go, where'd it go? This guy right here, we're gonna move that, okay. This is markup amount. All right, so you make something, if you don't make it and also sell it, chances are you make it and somebody else sells it. Well, they have to get their money too, and so there's a certain amount of markup that occurs in most things, unless you manage to buy wholesale. Wholesale means you can essentially buy it straight from the factory and there's no extra markup amount in the price. It's just the pure price, if you want to think of it that way. So we need to do the markup rate. Again, this is going to be a rate, a percentage, times the wholesale price. All right, so coming from the manufacturer, what is the markup rate? That'll give us the markup amount. So not super crazy. Um, we've got a clothing manuf manufacturer this time around. Can I move this? I can't. There we go. We have a clothing manufacturer selling sweaters for $14. Department store picks these up, and they're going to mark them up so the department store can make money because they have employees to pay, and they've got a building to pay for and everything else. And so their markup amount is 150%. Oops, I said that wrong. I said markup amount. That is the markup rate. The markup amount is going to be dollars. So again, it's just a simple multiplication. If I'd like to know the markup amount, markup amount, this is me abbreviating, I'm going to take my markup rate. Again, this is 150 per cent, per cent. That's 1.50 for multiplication purposes. Never use the percent form for calculation. Always use the decimal form for calculations. <coughs> so what is 150% of 14? Well, that's all of it plus half, so that's going to be 21. <coughs> now, most common misconception occurs right now. The question asks, what's going to be the selling price of the sweater? And I know a whole bunch of people out there that will say, yes, we're going to sell the sweater for $21. No, that is the amount that is being marked up on top of the price. That means, note to self, take the original, add on the markup amount to get the true selling price for whoever department store in this case is going to be marketing and selling the sweater. <clears throat> So that is actually going to be a $35 sweater on the price tag. All right. <coughs> Read carefully. The best advice that I can give you on this stuff is make, kind of pretend like it's your company and it's your money. Nobody's going to keep track of your money as well as you are. So think of it that way and you don't want to ever be shorted. So there we go. <coughs> and now it's clearly time for me to go as well. All right. Thanks so much. Have fun. Be careful.